morning children today i am going to explain types of chemical change or chemical reactions on the basis of chemical changes taking place these reactions can be divided into following types first we will explain direct combination or synthesis a reaction in which two or more substances combine together to form a single substance is called a combination reaction or synthesis the combination reaction can be involved in when two elements combine to form a compound let us take an example carbon when burns with oxygen it gives carbon dioxide that is a single product two metal two elements sorry two elements iron and sulfur they combine together and on heating it gives iron sulfide it can also form when an element and a compound combine to give a new product that is 2co that is a compound and o2 is an element when they combine they give 2 co2 a single product sulfur dioxide is a compound and oxygen is an element they combine together and form sulfur trioxide combination reaction can also form with two or more compounds combine to form a single product here nh3 is a compound and hcl is also a compound these two compound combine together and form only one product that is nh4cl when calcium oxide is a compound which combines with water is a compound and they react together and form only one product to give you calcium hydroxide and you know calcium hydroxide is also known as slick lime which is used for white washing in our walls these calcium hydroxides they combine with the atmospheric carbon dioxide and give a white layer of calcium carbonate and water layer of calcium carbonate forms a shiny finishing on our walls now it also give the reactions of photosynthesis photosynthesis is also a combination reaction in which the molecules of carbon dioxide and water are used by the plants to make glucose so 6 co2 plus 6 h2o in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives c6 h12o6 plus 6o2 to show some direct combination reaction we can also use this type of reaction that is a lead sulfide which is black in color is taken in a test tube and when it is heated it gives a white precipitate of lead sulfate same way when magnesium is burned with oxygen it gives a dazzling white light forming magnesium oxide in second reaction is decomposition reaction the chemical reaction in which a compound splits into two or more simpler substances is called decomposition reaction decomposition is the breaking off of a compound either into elements or simpler compounds such that these products do not recombine to form the original compound decomposition reactions on the basis of the form of energy required for the reaction they are of three types one is thermal decomposition these reactions are used in the energy in the form of heat for the decomposition of the reactant that is cao3 on heating it gives you cao plus co2 lead nitrate pbno3 hol2 on heating it gives lead oxide plus nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen 2 kclo3 on heating it gives 2 kcl plus 3 o2 if second is electrolysis these reactions involve the use of electrical energy for the decomposition of the reactant molecule for example 2h2 on passing an electric current it gives 2h2 plus o2 2 nacl on passing an electric current it gives 2 na plus cl2 third is photolysis or photochemical decomposition these reactions involve the use of light energy for the purpose of decomposition example 2 agcl solid plus on in the presence of sunlight gives 2 ag plus cl2 same as 
2 AgBr on passing and sunlight, it gives 2 Ag plus Br2. In some of the cases, we have seen that a decomposition reaction that is brought about by heat without any recombination on cooling is known as thermal decomposition. Decomposition of compounds of metals by heat are based on their reactivity. Compounds of reactive metals are more stable, they do not decompose easily, while less reactive metal compounds decompose. Let us take the metal hydroxides. You can see that potassium and sodium are the most reactive, so they are stable to heat, but from calcium to copper, they are less reactive as compared to sodium and potassium, so they can decompose to form metal oxide and water vapor. And the last is mercury and silver, which is the least reactive. They decompose to give metal oxygen and water vapor. Now the question is, which metal hydroxides are stable to heat? So any example you can give, potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. Which metal hydroxide decompose on heating to form metal oxide and water vapor? Anything you can give, calcium, magnesium, uh, aluminium, copper, lead. And which metal hydroxides yields metal, oxygen and water vapor? Any example you can give, mercury and silver. Like that, carbonates, the potassium and sodium are the most stable to heat and they are soluble in water. Rest, you can see, rest carbonate, that is from calcium to copper, they are least soluble and these carbonate decompose on heating with decreasing vigor to form metal oxide and carbon dioxide. And the least reactive metal mercury and silver, they decompose on heating and forming metal oxygen and carbon dioxide. Like that, metal carbonates also, they decompose to give metal carbonates, water vapor and carbon dioxide. Sodium bicarbonate on heating gives sodium carbonate water and carbon dioxide. Metal nitrates also, or the most reactive metal nitrates on heating, they melt and decompose to give metal nitrite and oxygen. Now the question is, which metal nitri nitrites on heating melt and decompose to give metal nitrite and oxygen? So you will write potassium and sodium. Rest nitrites, you, nitrates you will give, decompose on heating, gives metal oxide, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. Oxygen. So, any example you can give. And another question, which metal nitrates form metal, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen? You can give mercury and silver. Now, decomposition reaction can also take place in our body, that is digestion. Digestion of food by our body is also decomposed by the decomposition reaction. Starch, in the presence of enzyme, they decompose to glucose and these glucose and further oxidation, they breaks into carbon dioxide and water vapor with large amount of heat. To show the decomposition reaction, we can do two or three experiments. We can take lead nitrate crystal in a test tube and we will heat. When the crystal melt the on heating, they give a brown color of nitrogen dioxide and colorless gas oxygen and the precipitate which is left behind in the test tube is yellow solid. Same as in zinc carbonate. When zinc carbonate is taken in a test tube and heated, it decomposes in to zinc oxide and carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is a carbon when carbon dioxide is passed through a lime water it turns milky and the residue which is left that is zinc oxide when it is on heating it changes to yellow and when it cools it changes to white. Same as ammonium dichromate. Ammonium dichromate is orange in color when on heating it swells and decomposes with flashes of light evolving nitrogen and water vapor. And the residue which is left that is the chromic oxide which is green in color. Same as hydrated copper sulfate. Hydrated copper sulfate is blue in color when on heating it changes into anhydrous salt that is white in color and again adding in this anhydrous salt water, it again changes to blue in color. So in this react decomposition reaction, we have seen that some of the reactions are showing a reversible reaction.
a reversible decomposition reaction brought about only by heat we can also call this one as a thermal dissociation you can see iron on passing steam it changes into fe3o4 plus 4h2 again on passing hydrogen to this product it can again come back to iron and steam so this is a reversible reaction and this arrow shows the reversible reaction of this compound same as ammonium chloride ammonium chloride on heating it gives ammonia and hcl which deposited in the upper part of the test tube when it cools they again combine to form ammonium chloride same as nitrogen tetraoxide it is a colorless when on heating it changes into reddish brown and when it cools it again come back to a colorless of nitrogen tetraoxide so this is the end of the second uh type of reaction